Hi, I'm Pastor Brad from His Outpouring Church. I want to personally invite you to come to His Outpouring Church this Saturday at 6 p.m. We meet off Center Court inside the East Ridge Mall in Casper, Wyoming. Every Saturday at His Outpouring Church, you can expect the presence of God to touch your life in a new way. You may give a prophetic word or solution to a problem or experience healing. There's a great environment for kids and an encouraging message for you. Maybe you've been looking for a church or maybe not. Either way, we really want to see you at His Outpouring Church this Saturday evening. Come explore faith and meet some great people in the process. I cannot wait to see you at His Outpouring Church in East Ridge Mall this Saturday at 6 p.m. You think about the things of God have to be caught. They can be taught, but it has to be caught. You've got to catch the things of God. You can fill your soul up with knowledge all you want. But at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that, that, that you're fully in, embracing what God has done. I can prove it to you. Turn on a college football game and watch the newscasters. They only played football up to, up to junior high. <laughs> and they're sitting here talking to these guys. Wow. Blah, 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 blah. So they have tons of knowledge. But they didn't catch the game. They didn't play the game. They don't know what it's like to run down the field and have somebody just hit you upside the head. Yeah. And all of a sudden you can smell that burning rubber. And everything on you is ready to go. Until you've had that feeling, until you've experienced God and caught it, it's really hard. Amen. It's really hard to sit there and continually talk about it. So I want us to be a church where, where we catch it and we don't, we don't talk about it. What well, was interesting, we had pastors from, um, from Washington, Oregon, uh, Georgia, um, Kansas, uh, South Texas, um, all over. A couple came from uh, Canada, had some that came from overseas, and we taught in the churches. And this is Tulsa, the buckle on the Bible belt. And the Lord had me read, and, or had me preach, and, and I'm sure you guys wanted to be there to catch every bit of it. But Mark 4, and so or so the word. I know you wanted to hear that again. And you know what's amazing? They had not heard it like that, which was really an eye-opener to me. Because we assume that they get it. So the Lord is laying down some foundation to move forward. So, so we're going to talk about spiritual health tonight. So here we go. Intro. Optimal health. What is optimal health? What is optimal physical health? Now, of course, <laughs> I'm married to the most healthy woman in the universe. So every time I think I have it figured out, Sharon will say, do this and try that, and I learn something new. Have you noticed in God just when you think you got it? See, here's the thing. Religion starts where, you're, where you stop. Whenever you stop and you say, that's enough of God I want, you just built religion. And the Holy Ghost says what? That, that it's glory upon glory upon glory upon glory upon glory. And you can get as much as you want. And you can get as much as you want. And by the way, pray for Michelle. She's going to Africa uh, on the 21st. And she'll be gone till November the 14th. So you guys... Um, she lives on the 18th. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What's your name again? Okay, good. Anyway, she's going to Kenya. So do you remember uh, Hans that came over and prophesied that late that night? Really, really strong words. So she's going over with him. She's going to be gone for a month. So you guys make sure that you keep her in prayer, okay? Pray for that nation. They're going to need it because she's coming. <laughs> so to me, optimal health is it requires movement, breath, Sleep, stretching, massage, rest, diet, water, a positive can-do attitude, a strong spiritual presence. What else does it require? What am I missing, Sharon? What's that? I hit about every one. Balance. What else? What would you say, John? Good core. Dis oh, discipline. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, and, and most people say, how do you get in shape? Well, I'm going to run out and I'm going to start running. I'm just going to go do that. How well does that work for you? I watch people wearing the wrong shoes, running on the wrong surface, running incorrectly. And, <laughs> and you wonder why they say this doesn't work and it doesn't feel good. So the thing I love about working out is the area that you're sore doesn't mean that you stop doing it and get on a bicycle. That's not what it means. It means that, it means that you work on that area. And you learn how to do it better. You just keep doing it. You learn how to do it better. And, and to me, in health, you never arrive. You just, you just get stronger. And it's the same thing in the gospel. We've had a tendency to stop 
Wherever, whenever it got hard, we stopped. So let's, so I gotta be careful here because I could go in five different directions. In fact, I may. But why do we pray in tongues and why do we worship? So tell me why we're praying in tongues and worshiping. Tell me why. Come on, you guys are doing it. How come we're doing it? Okay, how else? Okay, to speak what he wants without hindrance. What else? Why are we praying? Why are we seeking God? Why are we fasting? Why are we doing all this? So let's, so let's bring it way, way, way down. We were, we were created to be in relationship, so it brings it. Now, have you ever noticed when you started praying, first time you started praying in the Holy Ghost, spending hours praying in the Holy Ghost, how you ran into what we used to call an impasse back in the old days? You hit an impasse? What do you think that is? What do you think that impasse is? Maybe it's a rock. Maybe it's a trunk. Maybe it's hard ground. You're praying and seeking God to, to keep your plow in the ground, to break up that ground. So the minute a rock comes, you can clear that rock out. And after you clear that rock out, now, now you can have really, really fertile soil. I was looking at the arena, and one of the churches I was at, they had this arena, and I love this guy. He's an ex-surgeon. He's an ex-surgeon. Siri's joining in with us. He's an ex-surgeon who, who, who wanted to become a pastor. And what's amazing is that he's, if you've ever seen arena soil, has anybody been in, a, in, a, in, an, in an arena? Have you ever looked at the soil? Besides the horse poop and everything else, but if you look at the soil, it is super fine. It's like silt, right? No rocks, nothing, because you can't have those in there. You have a grand champion horse in there, and, and, and he steps on a rock that is not good, yeah. right? Amen. So as I was looking at that soil, because I would, I would teach, and I'd go out and I'd look at the soil, and, and I was just thinking, boy, that's exactly how Jesus was. So we want to be more like Jesus, but we don't understand the process of why we're doing it. We're doing it because we were told to do it. We're doing it because, because, because we took a few verses, and then we ran with those two verses. Let me ask you a question. When I was a kid growing up, my mother packed bologna sandwiches. I hate bologna sandwiches. I will always hate bologna sandwiches now. Do you know who trades a kid that brings bologna sandwiches to school? Nobody. <laughs> You think a kid with peanut butter and jelly is trading for a bologna sandwich with white bread? Seriously? <laughs> and I think maybe a full carrot or something. I don't know what was in it. <laughs> but it was horrible. I hated eating. I would skip. I've even been known to throw my lunch in a dumpster. But would, do you want to live the rest of your life on a bologna sandwich? The only good bologna sandwich I saw was at, uh, what's that place in Tulsa where Toby Keith, what, what's that place? Uh, oh, anyway, it's a, anyway. He had, he had barbecue bologna sandwich. I tried. It was really good. But this is not what I got growing up. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Tell the truth. Do you want to eat ribs all the time? Every single meal? Some of you men do, but I'm just saying. Do you want to eat raw cucumbers and hummus? I mean, if you could pick one meal, what would you pick? Just think to yourself. You've got to eat one meal for the rest of your life. What, what, uh, what would you pick? Walleye, ribeye. All of you guys eating meat. It, it was nice knowing you. We'll be bearing you at 50. <laughs> All you guys eating, eating vegetables, we're going to have to eat vegetables. But what we've done in the body of Christ is we've lived on one meal over and over and over. And then we fought and we've defended that one meal. I'm telling you, bologna's the best, hallelujah. No, it's not. Chicken nuggets are. No, they're not. I'm just, I, mean, you, I mean, you get my point. Hopefully you get my point. You kids that took... Peanut butter and jelly, I don't like you at all. Some of you guys had really, I mean, your mom really, really cooked. Some of you had bags of chips, even. Yeah. Did anybody get bags of chips in their lunch? I didn't. You did? Oh, man, come on. What's it got to do with anything? It has everything to do with this. It has everything. We're, we're going to stop eating one meal. We're going we're to stop living off one verse. Now, do you notice when you talk with somebody and it's kind of hard? Have you ever talked to somebody it's just hard to talk to them? What do you think your plow's hitting on them? Rocks, gravel, you know, have you ever noticed that? So the Holy Ghost, he, he's telling us to keep our sword sharp, which is representative of that, of that ground. And we, you know, we always take as short sharpens short, uh, as, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man the other. 
And we have this, we have this thing of he's King Arthur and I'm, and I'm around the round table and we're sharpening this and all that kind of stuff, right? What if it's to keep your sword sharp that so it can cut the ground and divide spirit and sunder to find the rocks in your soul? So remember, man is a threefold being. So what is it? He has a what? He lives in a, a body and he has a, a mind, a noggin, right? And he has a spirit. So when your body quits working, what happens? You jump out of your body. What do you do when your car quits running? You either get it fixed or you get a new car. You don't sit there on the side of the road going, glory to God, in Jesus' name, I command this car to keep running. Do you? Some of you guys do. <laughs> I got plenty of those stories. One day, I had an Audi. I had an Audi. Hey, I've had more Chevys than Fords, bro. I had an Audi, and I married an Audi. You ever married an Audi? In this marriage, I married a Chihuahua. My prior marriage, I married an Audi. So we're in between Perryton and, let's see, Perryton and Pampa, Texas. Does anybody know where that is? No. Of course you don't. There's nothing out there. Nothing. nothing. So the car crit's running. So I pop the hood, and I look, and I'm like, yeah, there's an engine, hallelujah. And I saw oil, so I shut it, and I said, it's been anointed by oil. So I put my hands on it and prayed, got back in it, and it started, and we drove all the way in. So when I get to Perryton, my wife goes, you're going to go to the shop? I go, no, I'm not going to do it at all. And we drove that car the rest of the time. Now, that's not the optimum way to do things. But I heard God, and I'm stuck out in the middle of nowhere. And this is way back before cell phones. You guys remember life before, before cell phones? Do you remember how you used to sit down and, now I'm really meddling now. Do you remember how you used to sit down and pray and you weren't looking at reels? Oh, come on. Yeah. See, I can tell when some of you guys are praying because I'm getting reels. <laughs> All right, let's quit meddling. So we're a threefold being. Number one, we're a threefold being, spirit, soul, and body. So the spirit's the real you. The soul is what? Your mind. Will, emotions. What is it? My will, and mind, will, intellect, and emotions. All four, right? So where does drama come from? Emotion. Comes from where? Your soul, your mind. Right? Where does the way that... So, so whenever the Holy Spirit says to uh, renew your... to uh, save your soul, what does that mean? Renew your mind. And how long does that take? <laughs> A lifetime. <laughs> My theory, even in heaven, we're still going to be doing this thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody with me? Yes. Number two, spiritual health. Number two, ask for spiritual help. Get his perspective and not only yours, or not only ours. Let's turn to Proverbs 3, verse 7 and 8. Hallelujah. Missed you guys. A little bit. No, I did. It was, it was good. You know, you know what's great about going on the road? They take you out and stuff you so full of food that for days, you're like, oh my gosh, because I'm not used to eating that way. Um, I slept in four different beds. It's weird. Remember when you were younger, you just sleep on the floor and everything is fine. And uh, it's weird because I'd wake up this way and that way. And I don't know. It was, uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It's fun to see people who are hungry and at the end of themselves coming and wanting to hear. Yeah. And so the pastor, here's how he started. He says, okay, you're going to start, or, or the guy putting it on, he goes, I want you to start. And I'd like you to pray and prophesy to everybody. I was like, okay, great. So he hands me a microphone, and I start teaching. He goes, no, I said pray and prophesy. So we lined everybody up and gave everybody a word, right? I've, I've gotten so many calls from these pastors. And do you know what they're saying? God is telling us to do something different than the normal church setting. That God is trying to reach out in a different way. Like he's trying to get us to meet at different times. He's trying to get us to do different things. He's trying to get us to lay in his presence. Are we on the right track? Because everybody around us is saying that, you know, we're doing it incorrectly. And I said, oh, so the, everybody carrying the bologna sandwiches is telling you that that's all you can take to lunch, right? <laughs> Do you know a crawdad, if you put one crawdad in a bucket, you can get out? You put two crawdads in a bucket and they'll fight each other. If, the minute the crawdad tries to get up, the other one pulls him back down. Did I say crawdad or the ch current church? Which one did I say? Oh. All right, here we go. Do not... <laughs> Do not be wise. <laughs> Do not be wise in your own eyes. Do not be wise in your own eyes. What's he saying there? What's he saying to us? Don't think you're all that in a bag of 
There you go. I didn't get chips in my lunch. What's somebody say? Don't take your own advice. Okay. In other words, don't, don't look at it on this plane. Start learning to look at it on this plane. So when the Holy Spirit talks to me, what's he doing? He's, he's trying to impart eternity to me right now. He's trying to get me to get the eternal plan. And if I can get the eternal plan, what happens? The supernatural can come. But if I don't get the eternal plan, <laughs> it's interesting. Because in the church today, and I'm not, listen, if you think I'm mad at church, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying God is doing things differently, okay? Is it because God's changing? No, it's because God's evolving. He's, you know, it's like, it's like this cup. I always show this. This is full of coffee, so no one run up here and try to get it. So this is the cup, right? God's just spinning the cup around for us to see the other side of who he is. As you get to know him, he reveals more to you. Yeah. Remember when you first got married to your wife, guys? Remember how you were real careful on everything? Remember that? Then as time went on, you started loosening up a little bit. You got to know her better and all this kind of stuff. Remember that? Yeah. Holy Ghost is letting us. I'm going to stop there, Sheila. Don't worry. I know you know where you think I know where I'm going. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the Holy Ghost is, is he's about revealing who he is to us. So be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So what is the fear? Oh, my God. God's coming. <laughs> my mom used to say, and she didn't mean to. If you don't do what God says, he's going to knock you down. Anybody hear that coming up? Am I the only one? Well, you probably didn't get bologna sandwiches either. <laughs> you did, Rachel? Yeah. They didn't mean to. If you go halfway, God will meet you halfway. Where does it say that? It doesn't. Spoil the rod, spread the child. On and on and on. Interesting stuff. Fear the Lord. What does that mean? What does that mean right here? Who wants to take that on? Fear the Lord. Reverence and honor, right? And depart from evil. How about this? Do you remember when it says in Mark, in John 4, whenever the disciples came, he's talking to the woman at the well. Remember that? And the woman at the well says, hey man, how's it going? Kind of like that. And she was, a, she was a Syrophoenician, which means the Jews didn't hang with them. In fact, the Jews would go all the way around their town, not, not to get near them because they were half-breeds, because they weren't, quote, pure blood. And so she said, so anyway, he's talking to her. The disciples come. They're like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing talking to her? And they go, are you hungry? And what did he say? My meat is to do what? The will of the Father. And then it says in Hebrews, those who are, those who are of strong meat can discern good and evil. See, for years, people says, I've got the spirit of discernment. I can tell when something's going on. I can discern good and evil. When that's not really what that was even talking about. <laughs> it was talking about if you hear the Holy Ghost, that's good. And if you go your own way, that's bad. So this is what he's saying here. Be, uh, so, so let's just make it in Wyoming and Texas. Don't go on your own way. Go ask God how to get through the thing. Is that fair enough? Is that a good translation for that verse? Okay, next verse. And it will bring health to your flesh and strength to your bones. So you remember we were talking about Elijah? And then we talked about Elijah. Elijah had a double anointing. They didn't bury him very well. They were in the middle of burying him when they had a war and they left the hole open. Does anybody here feel like, they, like they've had an open wound in their life? Remember? So, so what they do is, is they take a soldier, and they, a dead soldier, and they throw him on those bones, and he comes back to life again. He goes, hey, folks, I'm down here. Get me out of here. There was life in those bones. See, whenever Joseph went to Egypt, he had favor. And in that favor, that's what kept Egypt going, even when they disregarded God. That's, what kept, that's what's kept this country going, even though we've disregarded God. And that favor, do you remember whenever Moses left, they said, get the bones and take them with you. So in taking Joseph's bones, they took the favor with them out of that country. And there's so many parallels on this one. He's going to bring, so what's he saying? He'll be health to your flesh, to your normal flesh. He'll be health to your normal flesh. And He'll, he'll, he's going to bring strength to your bones. He's going to bring you favor, healthy favor. And once you know you have favor, then you can start living in favor. 
If you don't know about favor, if you don't think you're favored, you can't have favor. <laughs> if I say, here's the keys to the car, and you can drive it anytime you want. The keys are right there. You don't have to ask me. Go for it. If you do not put the keys in or the fob, if you don't put that inside the car and turn it and put it in gear, you're not going anywhere. You have everything in that garage waiting on you, but yet we're not accessing it. My children perish for lack of... So God's trying to bring us favor. So point number two is ask for spiritual help. Get his perspective and not only yours. How many scriptures could we come up with here on this? What, a multitude? You know how many scriptures there are for fear? Overcoming fear? Do you guys know how many scriptures there are? 365 scriptures on fear. Overcoming fear. How many days are there in the year? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Number three, spiritual life brings body healing and your ability, how about this one, to stay in peace. Let's, okay, let's skip over to Proverbs 4, and I have down 21, but let's jump to 20 first. So what's the Holy Spirit doing to us, guys? He's getting us ready to run. Amen. Do you know staying in shape, you know what the number one thing on staying in shape is? Number one thing about staying in shape is your attitude. If you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're right. God gives us the freedom to make those decisions. Amen. Isn't that amazing? And no condemnation on anybody at any, at any time for anything. Listen, I don't have it all together. My mother packed bologna sandwiches for me. All right, here we go. Let's go to verse 20. Let's just back up to verse 20. You want me to read it? You don't, you don't have it down, do you? Let me read it. Oh, he's got it? Good. My son... Consider or give attention to my words. Yes. What was Sheila telling us to do earlier? Keep the eye on the ball. What is she saying? Give attention to the things God tells you. Have you taken the prophetic words people have given you through the years and written them down and kept them and gone back and reviewed them? I can remember years ago, uh, a man, Paul Tafoya, came to a Liberty Church. And we did not have children. And he said, I'll never forget this. He says, you will have children. You'll, I see a boy and a girl. And guess what I have? A boy and a girl. Hallelujah. Anyway. Anyway. Hallelujah. And I still have a boy. He's not on this round, but I still have him. Here we go. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. What would that mean? Rachel, what would that mean? Incline your ears to, to his sayings. Ooh, I like that. Be intentional to hear him. How do I hear him? If I need healing, I can intentionally find a verse. If I like money, I can intentionally find a verse, right? You know, it's interesting because I, I had a, a, croupy, uh, a croupy cough this week, and so did someone else. It was really interesting. Do you know we never spoke about it at all? We never addressed it, never talked about it. Didn't do anything. I just kept slamming cough drops and kept preaching. She just kept doing her thing. We didn't talk about it. We didn't give it time. We didn't incline our ear to the sickness. We didn't incline our ear to the poverty. Yeah, but I'm surrounded by it. Great. That's a wonderful thing. You can look up and Holy Ghost will bring it to you. And then God's got a thing called grace. And on some of us that are really, really hard-headed, who their mother packed bologna sandwiches, he gives us mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mercy is he comes and gets you. <laughs> He's bailed you out at the last minute. Anybody here been bailed out? Did you vow never to do that again? Yeah. And then a year later you were doing it again? <laughs> Once your mind gets renewed, that won't happen again. Next verse. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Come on. Are you serious? In other words, keep your attention on them at all times. So the Lord's shifting things with me. Does God change things with you? Yes. You know what he's having me do right now? He's having me be aware of him while I'm doing things. So I'll say, I'd like to, I'm going to sit down and pray for a little bit. He goes, why don't you go do something and just focus on me during it? I'm like, no, no, no. I like to sit down and get all comfortable and put the right music on and put my feet up and get the right cup of coffee and get in my right position. Who's like that besides me? Well, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
But it's like sometimes we compartmentalize. The minute we leave that, we go back into our realm. I don't ever want to go into my realm. I want to know what Holy Ghost is doing 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Years ago, Bob Jones, some of you guys may not know who he is. He was a phenomenal prophet. Uh, he called Rick Joyner one day, and he goes, somebody's gone to heaven. I can feel it in the heavenlies. So he calls up Rick Joyner. Do you know who it is? Of course, Rick acts like he doesn't. Who was it? It was Rick Joyner. That's why I called him. <laughs> but he knew something had changed in the heavenlies. Don't you want to be like that? I mean, seriously, don't you want to know something's going on? Have you ever had God show something to you and tell you something? Right? Have you ever had that occur? Have you ever not gone there and found out, whoa. One day the Lord said to me, when you drive home today, go this way, this way, and this way. So I did it. So instead of getting on the interstate, it means I've got to go through town and hit all the traffic lights all the way across, which puts 25 minutes onto my trip. Can anybody relate to that? Of course you can't. You live in Wyoming. <laughs> in big cities. <laughs> Oh, you got two stops. No, no, I love it. Hey, I love it. We have nothing to complain about living up here. Not a thing. Except for the wind. Well, anyway. So the next day, I'm driving, and I get the hugest X. Womp. Right here. It was massive. And my mind goes, well, he talked to me yesterday, but he's not talking to me today. Is he talking to me today? Don't do it. So I'm driving down the interstate. And I see this guy go out of control. And I see him starting to cross the median, and I see him heading for me. And as I'm yelling, Jesus, and, and I veer my car over, and he misses me by that much, uh -uh. and then hits the head, car behind me head on, I'm saying, you know, I shouldn't have gone that way. <laughs> I should have gone back this way. See, we, we're always looking for an example. In other words, I want to see the results when God tells me to do something. I want to see the fact that, oh, yeah, I see it blew up, but I'm safe now. So why do we want to do that? Why do we want to do that? Why do we want to be able to see the results? So that we can go brag about how spiritual we are? So you've got to be careful. You can't bring it back to you. It's always him. See, the biggest faith is God told you to do it, and you did it regardless of knowing what happened. And you know who was the worst at that? I was. I wanted to know what happened. Like, if I ever go to heaven, I'm going to say, who shot Kennedy? Who was the guy that did it? Next verse. You guys get anything out of this? For their life to those who find them. Ooh. They are life to those who find them. Is it possible that we can't find them? Have you ever lived in a household where they never opened the Bible? Have you, have you gone years out on end without opening the Bible? Of course you have. <laughs> the instructions to life are right there and we're not going to go read them. Has anybody here been mad at God and didn't want to go read him? <laughs> I'll, I'll raise both hands. Hallelujah. You know what God tells me sometimes when things aren't working out? He says, uh, what have you been listening to? Ooh. Okay. So here's a quick way to catch up. This is, this is worth the price of admission. If, you'll, if you want to see how people did it right and did it wrong, get in the first and seconds. Get in the first and second king. First and second Samuel, first and second Chronicles. Put it on at night and let it play. And you're going to hear some of the most knuckle, as, as you wake up, the answers that you need will be playing right there. And as you go back to sleep, has anybody ever experienced that? Have you ever just, yeah, you just wake up and you can hear the answer that you've been asking for is right there. First, second Kings, first, second Samuel, first, second Chronicles. Put it on and just, and just, and just listen to it. Another place to go is put the Gospels on. If you're having spiritual activity in your house, and I don't mean Christian activity, but if things are weird and you've got fear and you're seeing shadow people, put the word of God on at night. And that, and that will clean a lot of that up. Just put it on. Just put it on and let it play. Just let it, you know, your mind's asleep, but your spirit's picking it up, right? And then all of a sudden you're out there and this verse just starts to bubble up and you're like, where's that verse? Where'd that come from? Well, dear Lord, man, you've been playing it every night for two months. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. Who was that for? That's a good word. Yeah, every time, I'm serious. If you're, in a, if you're in a pickle, put the word on at night and let it play. Sleep with it. Okay. Uh, for their life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. And that's talking this. Next one. 
Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. You know, you know what happens to you? You know, you, you know what that's talking about? You can tell what's in your heart. You want to know how? Hit your, hit, your, hit your thumb with a hammer, and what comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart. Wow. <laughs> hit your thumb with a hammer, and what comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart. If you say, glory to God, hallelujah. Anyway. How do you know? Because I've hit my, I've, I've hit my hand with a fan, blah, 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 blah. I think you got it. In other words, get full on the word. And hear me one more time. If you are struggling to read the word, put it on at night. You can go to YouTube. And YouTube gives you tons of different versions. You can do the message. If you don't, the, I mean, the message is awesome. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's New Living Translation. There's tons of translations. You don't just have to do this one. So I get into this church, it's real funny. And it's funny how we perceive things. So I get into this church to preach on Sunday and I said, uh, I said, do you guys have the New King Diversion? And they go, no, we only have King James. I'm like, oh man, I'm in one of those King James only churches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting there going, oh, that's gonna hurt the offering. No, I'm teasing, a little bit. So, so I, so, cause I for years came up teaching King James, right? So when it was over, the pastor came up and said, no, it's not that we're a King James only church. That's the only version we have on, on the computer. And I was like, okay. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but anyway. Somebody needed that. Okay, number four. Ooh, you guys ready for this? Yes. Watch what you say. Amen. Speak life and not death. It is a spiritual law. We must guard what comes out of our mouths. How do, how do we view aging? Do you get up and say, I'm getting old and I can't do this anymore? Is that you? I'm getting old. I got to move slower. I got to do this. I got to do that. Or, oh my gosh, spring is coming. I always catch a cold in spring. <laughs> this always happens to me. I cannot believe it always happens to me. Right? What else do we say? And then, and then we're saying, by the, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Why doesn't God move for me? I tell people sometimes, stop talking. <laughs> They're coming for counseling. This always happens. Shut up. Just stop talking. It's like you're opening, it's like you're locking your door, but you're leaving every single window open oh, so the enemy can come in. I don't understand. I locked the doors. <laughs> no, it's true. How come somebody stole all my stuff? Well, your windows are open. You have a baloney sandwich in your lunch bag. <laughs> Quit saying negative things. Watch your mouth. Be, oh, come on, that doesn't make a difference. Really? <laughs> Is your life the way you want it right now? Is it 100% exactly how you want it? Are you driving the car you want? Are you living in the house you want to live in? Are your kids doing the things you want them to do? Well, that's, I uh, forget that. <laughs> it's weird. They hit 18, it's like, you know, boom, here we go. It's just gone. See you later. See you in about 10 and a half years when you need money. <laughs> no, it's not that long. <laughs> How many of you can tell when you, when, whenever the phone rings and it's your kids, you're like, oh, that's going to cost a hundred bucks. <laughs> can you guys imagine back in the day calling your dad for money, not in your best lifetime? My dad said, I'll never forget. He goes, Here, here's what my dad told me. Good luck. If you want to come home, you can't, but she can I was like, thanks, Dad. Is that tough? Just the way it was back then. Do you remember that? That's not in the Bible by any means. I'm just reading it. Watch what you say. Proverbs 12, 18. There is he that speaketh like piercings of a sword. But the tongue of the wise pr promotes health. Now, is this only health in your body? It's health in your, in your mind, in your soul, in your will, in your intellects, and it's also health with your spirit. I can, I, I can tell you if you have a healthy spirit. Here's the test. Something comes up, something comes up, and you go to God, you go, what do I do? <laughs> and everything around you is yelling, the boat's going to sink, right? And you say, what do I do? And he tells you to do something. And you start doing it, and then when the waves start to slap over, uh -oh. you, you're like, you know what? 
He told me in James 1, 5, that if I lack wisdom, let him ask a God that gives liberally. So I go back again with a pure heart and say, what do I do? And he tells you one more time. And then when the waves slap over, you say, what do I do? And he tells you one more time. And when the waves slap into your boat again, you say, what do I do? And he tells you one more time. How many times do you do that? Wow. Until you win. Come on. Having done all to stand, Aren't you standing when you're asking God yet again? I don't know why we think that we wrap ourselves up in a verse and we stand like this. Has anybody done that besides me? We are, we've only left one person out. Who's that? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey, you're in this with me. So here's the problem. We don't take him to our problems. We don't bring him to our problems. We don't invite him to come to our problems. And you can tell when, whenever you're learning to let him come to your problems because you can gauge it by your level of peace. You can gauge it by your level of peace. You know, last night I woke up for some reason and the enemy attacked me in the middle of the night. I didn't, I didn't have the word on I think I had on uh, Etta James or something. But uh, no, I think we had on somebody else. Anyway, the enemy attacked me in the middle of the night. I mean, it just hit me. Like anybody. So I wake Sharon up, I go, hey, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and she's half awake. You. you know how your wives are whenever we get an epiphany. Uh, yeah, okay, we're, we're fine. We got it, blah, blah, blah. So later she wakes up, she goes, what, what happened? I said, just an attack came in. This crazy thing came in. And in the middle of the night, I had a little panic attack. Has anybody had one of those? I'm not talking around freaking out. I'm just like, I'm laying in bed smoothly freaking out. Because I'm thinking, wow, we're we going to be able to do this, Lord? Really? It's like the first time he said, go do a revival. Sharing John, remember? We're t we got all of our ducks in a row. Karen remembers. We got everything lined up. It is thousands of dollars. The night before, I'm sitting there going, is anybody going to show up? I missed him. I know I missed him. This is the dumbest thing I've ever done. Why in the world would I do this? I don't even live in this town. This is not even my town. What am I doing here? And these preachers weren't nice to me. They don't want to come help. Blah, 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 blah. And finally, the next morning, the Holy Ghost comes and starts talking to you. But I'm glad that we went to that town because here's one and here's one. A couple of other. We didn't proselyte them. We did tie them up and make them go with us. But no, here's one. <laughs> Was it worth it for that? Absolutely. But we didn't go for that reason. But that's a serendipity of it. Thank God. Glory to God. So any preacher that tells you he's got it together, look at his wife and his kids. That'll tell the truth. Honey, do I have it together? Oh. <laughs> Proverbs 16, 24. This is, watch what you say, speak life and not death. It's a spiritual law. I'm going to be done in five minutes. Okay, pleasant words <laughs> are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Have you ever had fresh honey? Have you ever gone to like, as my grandmother raised hives. How many of you here have, 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 have just taken a stick and eaten it like that? Is that not the best in the world? Have you eaten too much of it and you're laying down later? Anyway, pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. What it's saying is it's going to line your spirit up with your soul and with your body. So you, so you can line all three up. Don't line up without your body. Get your physical body lined up as well. Amen. Make sure that it's lined up as well. All right, last one. You guys don't want to hear this one. Fasting. Ooh. Isaiah 52, 8. Isaiah 52, 8. Your watchmen shall, shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see eye to eye. I don't know where that came in. That's, I don't know. Oh, well, forget that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where I got this. Let's see, what is it saying? Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. That's pretty good, though it's not part of this sermon. <laughs> Has anybody got the rest of this? <laughs> Fasting, okay, fasting too. Uh, Matthew 17 says, uh, why could I not get this, this demon to come out? And he goes, because of your unbelief. So they all go to him secretly and go, how do I get unbelief? So I was in Tulsa, I couldn't wait to get in Tulsa. And I said, so why, why did fasting change? 
Okay. I'm going to fast this microphone. Hallelujah. I'm going to fast. Go ahead. I'm going to fast this microphone as well. Hallelujah. There we go. Um, so, so he says, because of your unbelief. And you guys have heard me preach this, but hopefully you understand that everybody's fasting now to stop unbelief. But that's not what he said. Because he says, if you have faith as a, as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be thou removed, to be thou cast into the sea. And then we've gone, and everybody goes, well, it's the smallest seed out there. So everybody's comp comparing the seed. And if you look at it, it's not the smallest seed. By any means is it the smallest seed. But what he was saying there, it's the least considered. That's why it's the smallest seed. See, a mustard seed is single-minded. It does not waver. It does not waver. It stays single-minded. So fasting promotes health to your body as it is. It lets the body cleanse itself, but it also gives you a spiritual perspective. It's total cleansing of the body and the spirit. We, dis we deny our methods to accept his methods. Has anybody here missed a meal? What's your body saying to you? Are you psycho? Right? I mean, it's not nice at all, right? It is not even nice. But as time goes on, you learn to get your body under to the point that you can actually fast to the point to where you're not hungry anymore. And your body goes, the reason that you're hurting is because your body goes for the bad toxins first. It goes to your storage. And in your storage, all that ice cream and sugar and all that fancy breakfast like Kenny makes, all that comes up first. And it's great breakfast too, by the way. <laughs> yes. It, it, that's what it gets. And your body's running on bad fuel. Then it gets to the good fuel. But that's not the point of it. The point of it is you can make your body resist the same way when the Holy Ghost asks you to do something and your body goes, are you nuts? Are you crazy? It's the same exact thing. Your body's yelling out. Your soul's saying the, the same thing. I'm not going to do that. Have you ever had God say something to you? And you're like, what? It's like everything he tells you is not possible without his help. And the minute we get that, the minute we get that, then all things are possible. There's nothing in your life right now that's possible outside of him. Well, I can go do it. I sit outside of him. I don't want to go without him. Do you, I mean, guys, do you want to go on long trips and leave your wife or do you want to come back to your wife? Of course you do. You get to the point where if you're with them, you're where you need to be regardless of where that is. It's the same way with God. So let me give you a couple of examples of guys who made it and guys who didn't, okay? So let me give you the points real quick. Number one, we are threefold beings, spirit, soul, and body. You've got to understand that for spiritual health. Has everybody got it? Where does drama come from? So where does the enemy hit you all the time? What does your soul do whenever it, gets, it, it, it becomes afraid? It agrees with the enemy. It agrees with the enemy. What does your mouth do? It agrees with the enemy. So the point is, a renewed mind is a mind that, that, that agrees with the word of God and the Holy Spirit whenever something is said to it, okay? Next one is, number three, spiritual life brings body healing and your ability to stay in peace. Body, soul, and spirit, all of it together, okay? Number four, watch what you say. <laughs> Speak life and not death. It is a spiritual law. Number five is fasting. Oh, by the way, the last fast I went on was a long, long, long fast, and I came out as thin. I was so skinny that I turned once and stuck my tongue out, and somebody thought I was a zipper. I was so skinny, I had to jump around in the shower to get wet. It's true. I put on, I put on striped pajamas and lost myself in the bed. That's skinny. But do you know what was harder than all that? It's when the Lord said, turn off the media. <laughs> I said, Father, I'll fast 100 days if you'll let me have media back. That was harder. That was harder. So you ever heard of Jehoshaphat? Jehoshaphat was blessed because he was Asia's son, but he was a grandson to who? King David. Whenever Jehoshaphat, as a ruler, would obey God, Nothing but great success would come from him. When he would do dumb things and not obey God, their, their country would get in trouble. He was so dumb but had God's favor. Have you ever been so dumb and had God's favor? People around him were giving him money. They gave him money to make sure that they were still buddies. 
they weren't shoot, lobbing missiles at them. They're lobbing money at them to make sure that, 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 that Jehoshaphat, which was Israel or Judah, did not come against them. They were afraid of him. But whenever, whenever uh, Ahab invites him over, and, a- and Ahab was a very strong personality, and you'll find out quickly that I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I can tell you this. Ahab talked him into doing some things, and Jehoshaphat just jumped in bed with him. Ahab called 300 and something prophets who prophesied that, that, that Jehoshaphat needed to go fight this nation. And I mean, uh, Ahab needed to fight this nation. And oh, by the way, Ahab couldn't do it by himself. He needed the force that Jehoshaphat had. Have you ever had somebody ask you to do something and, and what they really want is your anointing and your favor with God? They don't really care about you? You'll find that in ministry. It's pretty interesting. So, so he goes, and so um, Ahab calls 399 prophets or whatever. I can't remember. John, do you remember the number? It was a lot. It was a lot. I mean, a lot. And uh, Je- Jehoshaphat goes, I'm not impressed with this. There's a guy here. Who else is there here? And he goes, there's so-and-so, but I don't like him because he never says what I want to hear. Oh. Now, have you ever thought about that? We want something that itches our ears. We want it to always say that we're doing well. Why do we care if people like us or not? Do you know most people that don't agree with you do not say anything on the blog that you just posted? Only those that like you do, but there's a whole lot of people that don't like you, and they're nice enough not to say a word to you. Thank goodness for that. And by the way, they're all writing to you when they're on the toilet anyway. You didn't get that, did you? I'll keep moving because my wife's giving me that look. So Ahab says to him, this is, this is spiritual health even when you don't get it. Ahab says to him, why don't you put on my armor and get into my chariot and act like me? So the Philistines are fighting them saying, hey, there he is. Let's go get him. But it's Jehoshaphat. It's not Ahab. So they're heading for him. And when they get up to him, they're like, hey, you're not Jehoshaphat. You're, you're not Ahab. You're Kenny. So they go, it's not him. So, that, so they turn around and go back. Ahab, which is such a great friend is dressed like all the other army people in their uniforms amongst all the multitudes of these guys hiding and they're hiding. (laughs) Somebody throws a crazy spear and guess who it hits? Ahab, right through here. And he dies that day. So then, I mean, think about... Think about the grace and the mercy on Jehoshaphat. He was a man that tried to follow God the best he could. When his spiritual health was up, they were up. When it was down, they were down. Whenever three countries were going to come against them, he said, he said, everybody, we're fasting and we're praying. We're going to get it together. You ever been like that? The big bad wolves knocking on your door and you're looking for the gun? You're, I mean, you're doing everything. Lining it up, getting ready, getting all your ducks in the row, best behavior. It's like watching my son go to go to court after he'd done something. That boy looked like Billy Graham in there. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you're like, and you're like, wait a minute. Did you just wait? Wait a minute. That's not. What are you doing here? But you know what he did? Because money likes worship. Money likes to soak and get in deep. And see, we're going to get there. We're going to get to the point where you go in and you get lost. And if you've never been lost, you need to get lost. You get lost in worship where you look up and you're like, Wow, how's it been three hours? I thought I'd just sit down here. So you know what he does? He puts the worship band in front. So they're going to go march, right? They're all together. Okay, we're going to go, we're going to go march. <laughs> here we go. It's like Oklahoma paying Texas last week. Here we go. So, so they put the worship team up front. And by the time they get there, these guys all turned on each other, and everybody's dead. And they come over the hill, and everybody's dead, and all they did is gathered all the goodies. The battle is the Lord, not yours, whenever you listen to the Lord. What happens when you get into fear is you're taking the battle back. The minute we get into patience and peace, we gave it to him. Does everybody get that? Sounds easy right now, doesn't it? Now, Jonah and Nineveh fast. And here's a funny fast. And this is my last point because I'm, ooh, I I passed up five minutes. Well, I meant five minutes central time. Um, (laughs) So Jehona, 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 he's from Oklahoma. Jehona. <laughs> you guys know Jehona? <laughs> it's like the first time. This kid was reading one day, and he, he, he was reading about palms. And I'm like, palms? He goes, yeah, palms. And I said, where's that? He goes, you know, palms 91. Oh, 
Palm Sunday month. I'm with you. <laughs> That's about how to raise trees or something. I don't know what it is. It does talk about a tree in that. So Jonah did not obey God. He's on the boat for three days like Jesus was. He's in peace, but Jonah is like, he's like, he gave up. I love Jonah because here's the thing. If you're going to do it, do it. If you're not going to do it, don't do it. Because where you get in trouble is in that waffling back and forth. That's where the devil goes, bam, bam, bam. But if you're going to, if you're going to go double-minded, be single-minded to being an idiot. Just do it like Jonah. So he's in the same boat. That's Jesus. He's asleep on the back of the boat, right? Is that true? Yeah. So they come wake him up, and they're smarter than Jonah is. They go, we've gone to all of our gods, and we're not getting an answer. It's got to be you. And so you know what they did? They honored Jonah's God more than Jonah did because Jonah was cavalier about God. He was upset and ready to go. He was done. He took the least. He took a route so far away from God. He went as far over as he could. Have you ever tried to run from God? <laughs> It doesn't work out too well. I, you know, when I was a kid, I remember hiding under a bed. But he found me. It's really weird. So did my mother. And then she packed a bologna sandwich. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, I want you to understand, I've had it hard, too. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, so, so, so Jonah, Jonah's running from God, right? And then I just love how God just came and swallowed him up with a fish. Now, could you imagine spending three days in stomach acid? It gives you a chance to rethink things out. If you smell stomach acid right now, you need to rethink what you've done. So then he spits him up, right? And now Jonah's finally ready. So, you know, he, you know, he makes the move. God does it. I mean, he, he wins 120,000 people in like two days. Because he finally was obedient to God. And then after he did it, he gets angry again and gets mad at God because he knew God was going to do it. <laughs> he's, he's, still, <laughs> he's still having a little bit of, he had to work on the love piece a little bit. He didn't quite get that part. But those things work. So let's just, let's just review them one more time, okay? Number one, what was number one? We're a threefold being, spirit, soul, and body. What's number two? And Kenny said it, we ain't, we ain't all that in a bag of chips. So we have to ask for spiritual help. Get his perspective and not ours. That's why you're asking God. You're trying to get a new perspective. Do you know why we get disappointed? Because our perspective did not come through. That's why we get disappointed. Because God didn't move the way that we thought he should. That's hard. I don't mean it to be hard. God's teaching us his perspective, and it takes time. you got to get rocks out of your field. You, you, I mean, you, uh, you got to get trunks out of your field. you got to get all that out of, our, out of your field. I mean, Sharon and I, we didn't pull this trunk out because it's a big trunk, so we put dirt over, and, and guess what we have now? Mushrooms, hallelujah. Now, I can forever cut the mushrooms off, right? But how long am I going to deal with mushrooms? Forever, until I get the trunk out. God's getting some of our trunks out. Some of us have rocks so big that our plow, here's our plow. You want to see your plow? Our plow is going through the dirt. You want to see your dirt? Because remember, once it gets to here, the devil can't get it. So the battle's here, right? Amen. He don't want it to germinate. He wants it to terminate. So the reason that we're having a hard time is our plow got broken. Our plow got bent. Holy Ghost is the best at fixing plows. He's got, a, he's got an implement company. Spiritual, uh, let's see, what is it? Spiritual life brings... Spiritual life brings body healing and your ability to stay in peace. So number three is your peace. How's your peace? And here's the thing. If you don't have peace, thank the Lord for that. What do you mean? Well, you're doing it wrong. Remember last week, John? I said, remember I was hurting in my sink, and John goes, get on the wrong shoes and the wrong surface. And guess what I had on? I had on old shoes on concrete. And Sharon calls those idiot injuries. <laughs> You know better, but you keep doing it because your big old male ego jumps in. Well, this time it's not going to hurt like that. Really? Okay. So I've learned, no, I'm learning <laughs> to change the surface, to change how I run, maybe to stretch, maybe to lengthen. The reason that you guys hurt so much is you don't know how to lengthen. You don't know how to stretch. Everything you do is you compact. Weightlifters compact all the time, all the time, but they don't know how to stretch. They don't know how to lengthen. I do a lot of push-ups and those kind of things. I run a lot. That's compacting. We compact, but we don't know how to stretch. 
Now the Holy Ghost is teaching us how to do? How to stretch. Here's how you stretch. Here's how I get you through it. It's that obedience to get through it. Uh, so number four was what? Watch what you say. Speak life and not death. And number five, which you guys were all excited about, was fasting. Because you can't wait. How about this? How about fasting your opinion? Fasting your tongue. Fasting your opinion. You know, think about this. Us charismatics. You ready? I'm going to get on us charismatics. We don't tell you how to turn a light on. We tell you how to wire the whole building. You ever notice that? Where's the light switch? We tell them about how to wire the whole building. <laughs> I asked Sharon one day, am I a typical charismatic? She went like this. <laughs> no, Sharon's like this. Yes, you are. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you keep talking all the time, you can't learn something from somebody else. So let me ask you this. Whenever you're talking, does the conversation always have to come back to you? Or do you just listen to what they have to say and try to glean something from it? Do you have an opinion after every conversation or have you gleaned something from it? It's amazing because when I was coaching, I'm really meddling now. Did we take the offering? Oh, hallelujah. Now we're going to have thousands instead of millions in there. So I'm watching what I'm saying. Anyway, what I'm, just become a kid again. So here's my last example on my five millennial minutes. Do you remember, when, remember the kid that you grew up with? Remember your best buddy whenever you were growing up? Remember somebody that you grew up with? Remember how fun life was? Remember how it was like, you know, we did this. And remember, we, you know, how many of you stubbed your toes when you were kids because you didn't wear shoes? How many of them your mother tried to pick the stickers out of your feet? Did your mother ever do that and hold you down and like take come out? Like she enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy any of that. Did you? Did you ever have one of those stickers that you couldn't get out? And they're, and they're trying to get a tweezer to get it out? How many of you were so dark that we used to just wear, we just used to wear shorts with nothing else? Man, we were so chocolate back then. I mean, we were just outside. All, sunscreen? What is that? Who cares? In fact, we were putting on sun, what was it? Sun lotion. We were trying to get darker. Yeah, baby oil. Olive oil. No, we were rich. We, we had bologna sandwiches, but we had copper tone. <laughs> but do you remember growing up like that? And the minute you get with them, what are you guys talking about? Remember we did that? Remember we did this? Remember we did that? It doesn't matter that they're a lawyer or a doctor. It doesn't matter that they've had a good life or a bad life. You just accept them and you bring them back in again. It's like you go back to when you were seven again. That's what Holy Spirit's trying to do with this. He's trying to bring us back to whenever we were seven. And that's what, through the ages, the pagan gods have always killed babies. Always kill babies. Always cut off babies' heads. What you're seeing over there today is what went on in the Bible all the time anyway. That's, it's the same old spirit. And if you haven't been over there, whenever we were there, we saw, uh, we were there for 10 days. They had missiles shot when we were there. There was... Um, there was a guy trying to kill a police officer, so, so, so he got gunned down. They took us to the Lebanon border, and we saw the fence. We saw the fence. I mean, I, I, mean, I can show you the fence. It was crazy. I got pictures of it. And that's just, in, that's just tourist. At one part, we were in the occupied area, and they got on the bus with semi-automatic weapons to check our passports. And then this is the crazy thing. We're in Jericho, and they're burning tires down there because they got all fired up from going to the mosque. And they're saying, well, they're just, you know, they're just trying to find a few infidels and, and Christians. And I'm like, bro, you got a whole bus full of us up here a half a mile away, and you're telling us we're safe. I mean, that's just how they live there all the time. But aren't we the same to some degree whenever we don't go find God and do the things God asks us to do and become like a little child yet again? So my, so my challenge this week is on your problems, and, and don't go looking for them. They'll come. They'll come knocking. <laughs> Say, thank you for coming, because now I'm going to learn something about the Holy Ghost because of you. Thank you so much, Mr. Not Enough Money for Rent. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. I'm going to sit here and worship God, and God's going to supernaturally do something. Oh, by the way, they're going to pay all of our electricity. The company is. The Lord says, I'm going to teach you on this. 
I'm going to teach you about this. And somebody ponied up the money for our electricity off of our bill. That's what I say. Grand, just for the, I mean, it's simple things. If it's big to you, it's big to him. So I'm not going to have an altar call tonight. Don't pass out. Do you know why I have so many altar calls? Because we need it. We all need more, more of Jesus. But if you want to come up and pray, if you want to come up, let's just, Lori, can you, can you hit the lights real quick? Uh, why don't you turn the lights down? Because I like to. No. Because it's more comfortable whenever you come in. Yeah, let's pray for the online audience. Hallelujah. So, we, Father, we just thank you for everybody online. We thank you that there's more people online than are actually here. And, Father, we ask that it keeps growing and keeps growing and keeps growing. If you need us, Reach out to us at 307-200-0228, or you can email me straight up, brad at hisoutpouring.com. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. I'm glad that you joined us. For more information, reach out to us at 307-200-0228. That's our church line. Or you can go online to hisoutpouring.com to get more information. And you can also reach us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok at His Outpouring Church. If you're in Casper, Wyoming, make sure you come join us. You'll find us at East Ridge Mall off of Center Court. So thanks again. Have a great week.